Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to um, Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So in this video, we're just going to do another velocity banking training with emphasis on being a landlord. So um, before we start, I just want to mention a video that YouTube recommended to me. So from a channel called Kevin Cho, Real Estate Business, Gator Method with Pace Morby. And so if you know who Pace Morby is, is he really uh, emphasizes like no money down, taking over mortgages, th those kind of deals, cr creative finance. And one of the things that is really surprising is that Pace often promotes, and probably with his uh, constituents, um, deals that have no equity within them, right? And so what's funny, or well, I don't know if I'll say it's funny, is I recently watched a video uh, from this channel that YouTube recommended, and this guy said he sold all of his rentals, has 27 rentals, right? And I think a lot of them um, he got with uh, subject to, meaning he took over the mortgage, probably with little equity in them. And so when I heard his numbers and I, talk, and I heard him like talking about all the uh, um, all of his rentals and how much equity he had, I was like shocked, right? And, you know, when you look at the internet and social media when it comes to real estate investing, um, people really love to emphasize like the number of doors that they have. And they also like to talk about like little no money down deals. And in my opinion, little no money down is like the charity on top. And getting a deal is way more important than um, little no money down. And I would do rather do uh, more with less, right? So if I have 27 doors, I want to make sure that I'm very productive with those 27 doors rather than having almost no equity in them. So I'm going to briefly go over some of the numbers that he talked about. But I'm not going to play the video here, but I might put a link if I'm not lazy and don't forget. But one of the things that we have to remember is that cash flow in rental real estate is incredibly hard. I mean, Bigger Pockets, the biggest website investing or real estate investing website on this planet, says that good cash flow is two hundred dollars a month. So, if good cash flow, and look at the good with quotes, is two hundred dollars a month. What's normal or average cash flow? Probably zero or negative, right? And so, again, um, I'm gonna just quickly go over his numbers, and then I'll tell you what I've been doing. And maybe it's a little bit humble brag, uh, but let me go back. Uh, whoopsie. Am I all right? All right. So basically, in his video, he said he sold all his rentals. He had 27 doors, and he had a partner, a business partner, who he sold all his rentals and equity back to, or something like that. And he had lenders and all that. And I'll tell you, I only have two doors, right? Me personally, I only got two doors, and I have 500k of equity. Right? And my only lend, I don't have any partners, and my only lender is a bank. Okay, because I love the bank's money because it's easy money and drama free money, and I don't have to do all these complicated legal structures. But here's the thing he sold 27 doors in exchange for $500,000 of equity. So uh, there's all right, so let's just do a quick calculation of $500,000 divided by 27, meaning there's only about 18 grand of, of equity that he had per property. He personally, maybe the, the, the business partner had the other 18 grand. Uh, another 18 grand of equity but that is insane that is insanely low see see like me you know i don't have 27 doors i got two doors and one of them is my own personal home and i have 500k 500k of equity right and one of the most important things when it comes to uh, purchasing real estate is you got to buy it at a discount Right. And so, again, he talked about in the video about how he was burned out and tired with 27 doors because you got to deal with 27 tenants. Right? You may have property management, but you still got to manage the property manager if you do have property management. I manage my own property. I get a 14 grand check every six months and I say hello to a tenant. Goodbye. Awesome. And then I just sit home bored. So I make velocity banking because that's that's literally what I do. And as you can see here. We got to buy it at a discount, and I want to show you the power of using Velocity Banking and doing this with lesser doors, okay? We don't need um, 27 doors, each of them, you know, with creative financing, with little to no money down and having no equity in the deal. No, no, no. The, the, the creative financing, the subject to, that's the cherry on top, and so I would need a deal where I get like a $100,000 discount, and I could take the, the over the mortgage, right? That would be awesome, but I would never take over a mortgage where uh, basically you bought the property at market value or you have partners and lenders, right? Which means that there's no skin or nothing for you to eat um, from from 
from your <laughs> how do you explain you know what i'm saying like there's not there's not there's no there's no meat in the deal right so let's just go ahead and review what i've been doing again i'm practicing what i'm preaching and here's the thing landlord reality right two hundred dollars of cash flow is good so if you do real estate the traditional way where you just calculate the tenant's income and you know take take off all their expenses and get those two hundred dollars for you to eat you know take home that's gonna be bad times because here's here's the deal right best case scenario you get seventy two thousand dollars over thirty years two hundred times twelve times thirty that's seventy two thousand over thirty years now if you're the bank and you're loaning on that two hundred thousand dollar property even though it's at a hundred thousand dollar discount you're gonna end up better than the, than the landlord right you're gonna make three hundred twenty eight thousand and where did I get that number for well I have this loan calculator that shows this you get two hundred thousand dollars right two hundred thousand dollars eight percent interest thirty years and how, if uh, if it's three hundred sixty months passes which is 30 years look at all that interest the bank made three hundred twenty eight thousand dollars for doing nothing the bank's saying hey you own the property you manage the tenant you do everything we're just going to sit here and collect interest and make five times more than you of course they'll never tell you that they'll be like oh you can you know be proud that you're a landlord right and so what we need to do is turn the tide and so if we take a look here oh wait not here not here my bad we want to reverse this. We want to make sure as a landlord, we make more than the bank. The bank is making almost like five times more than us for doing nothing, right? So how do we do that? We do this thing called velocity banking where uh, I, I've gone over in other videos like the, the gist, of, well, not the gist of it, more detail, but the gist of it is that we're going to apply all of our income. We're not going to segregate our income, right? So most landlords, they segregate their income. Because they just apply the tenant's income to the, the, the house's expenses. But why not apply all of your income in the tenant's income to the, to the housing loan, right? Why not do all that? And one thing we want to really hone in is that when we do landlording, we have to do it from the position of strength. So let's say we paid off all of our debt. And if you want to take a look at how we pay off debt, go to get, go to any other video on this channel. This this um, video is more focused on landlording. So but we do talk about debt payoff strategies in other videos. But let's just assume that we had a personal mortgage and we had an investment mortgage and we had a tenant that never paid. As long as we're cap positive cash flowing by, by a decent amount and the tenant never pays, we'll be okay. Because the last thing we want to do is freak out because uh, we need to rely on the tenant's income. And tenants don't always pay. Right. So in the worst case scenario, if the tenant never pays, hey, we get, you know, at least some cash flow. But let's assume that the tenant did pay us. Right. So that would be two thousand dollars a month. Multiply it by 70 percent because 30 percent we have to leave for expenses like taxes, insurance, all that other good stuff. But we're going to now have three thousand dollars of cash flow a month. OK. And our general strategy is that we're going to move some of the principal so let's say about 10K, right? 10K of this mortgage. So this is actually going to be 190K into the line of credit and use all of our income and then pay it off over and over again. So after about three months or so, that 10K should be gone. And, and again, we're using the power of our entire income, right? Or the power of our entire income into a line of credit. And the cool thing is we don't need a huge line of credit to do this. We don't. Right now, luckily, we have a velocity banking calculator to just kind of demonstrate how this works. And let me actually pull it out. Give me one second. So it's kind of like a cheat sheet for velocity banking. And if you want more detail, go to other videos. But this is just a quick review of how to um, see the, the power of velocity banking. So all I got to do is just type in the numbers here. And this is actually provided by Renatus. Uh, Renatus is an educational company where I learned velocity banking from. So let me make sure I put the numbers in. So two hundred thousand dollar loan, eight percent, fourteen sixty seven. Chunk amount is how much you're moving to the line of credit, and so it just has to be a small amount, right? Maybe similar to your income. And then let me just see if I did this right. So income. Uh, let's just do this. Let's do worst case scenario. I mean, the tenant never paid us six thousand, right? And their expenses are two thousand dollars in general expenses plus. Oh, I forgot our own personal mortgage. So it's 2843.21. So 2843.21, right? And if the, the tenant never pays us, right? Let's take a look at this. In seven years, in seven years, that mortgage is paid off. 
So we got a deadbeat tenant and we paid it off in seven years. And the bank did not make 328000 They only made 60000 Now let's apply the tenant's income to that line of credit. So let's go ahead and do this equals plus uh, $2,000 times 0.7. Okay. And then wabam paid off in 4.4 years. Right? 4.4 four years we paid off our first rental property now I know that um, uh, some for some people this may be amazing but I'm actually gonna pay off my rental property I think in two more years and I paid off my my personal mortgage under three so 4.4 years now the cool thing is again let's rinse and repeat the process over and over again and so what I my plan is is I want to buy a rental property at a discount Make sure that there is some equity in the deal and we're not just buying it just because it's no money down, right? So again, let me show you here. We need to get one of these little uh, houses where it's worth 300 and then buy it at 200,000, right? And then the thing is, is that even if we bought this at market rate at 300,000, it doesn't mean we get rental income at 300,000. Rental income and the price that you can buy it are two uh, this numbers that have no direct correlation with each other, right? <laughs> so just be aware of that. All right, so now let's go back to our velocity banking spreadsheet. And then right here, we just re repeat the same process again. So we got two ten one tenant, we paid off the, the rental house in 4.4 years, and then we just get another rental house, right? So again, this is what I call the slow, steady method of building up equity because we're going to have once that rental house pro probably paid off it's going to be probably worth three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars and then now we get the next rental house paid off and now it's paid off in 3.2 years right 3.2 years okay and then we rinse and repeat again with the next house right add another uh tenant in there in the mix get a three hundred thousand dollar house for two hundred thousand dollars Wa bam! The last one is whoa! Oh my goodness! So let's just do eleven thousand dollar chunk. Okay, two point five years, right? Two point five years. And so, by the end, let me just actually add this all up. So this is four point four plus three point two plus two point five. That's going to be about 10 years. So in 10 years, we have three fully cash flowing houses. It's not our little $200 a month uh, itty bitty cash flow. And we probably have a million dollars of equity with just three houses, right? So again, remember the 27 houses and $500,000 of equity with only 18 grand of equity per per that individual? Yeah, right. Well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so again... Uh, this is why with Velocity Banking, we could do so much more with just a few houses and not have to deal with 27 tenants and partners and lenders. I honestly think all that stuff is just going to overcomplicate the real estate, right? And we're going to cash flow with three houses. And if, hey, if we need more cash flow, buy another house, pay it off in about two years, right? <laughs> so again, this is my uh, strategy or plan. And what I'm doing, I'm not saying you have to do it. But what I'm saying is that sometimes what's um, popular on the internet, getting as many doors as possible and little to no money down deals may not actually be in your best interest, right? So let me just kind of go back here. And then again, quick comparison. Um, you saw that if you watch the video, he says he had 27 doors, $500,000 of equity, and he was burnt out. I have two doors, $500,000 of equity, and I sometimes I can't even remember that I have rental real estate because I barely see my tenant, right? I barely see my tenant. Well, that's it for today. So just another landlord review. Again, uh, more cash flow and do more equity, but with fewer houses because we're applying all of our income. We're not segregating it, right? That's the key word here, segregation of income. We're not segregating income and we're paying off all – I'm sorry. Ooh. ooh. Uh, I'm, I'm burping here because I'm so excited, but we're paying off all of our debt with uh, Velocity Banking. And with you saw in 10 years, three paid off houses and the average American can't even pay off one house in about 30 years, right? All right. Well, that's it for today. <laughs> so don't mean to rag on other people, but I just thought it was really interesting what other people are doing compared to my method, which isn't as uh, 
you know, hot and uh, S-E-X-Y on the internet. All right. Well, have a great day, everybody. We'll speak next time.